I have to tell you that it is extremely important the job that you are doing because science by itself can't, can't change the world. Uh, we need policy. We need your, your work and your support to continue. And uh, together we can make a huge difference for mankind. And with the help of this year's four other Science Nobel Prize winners, Dr. Craig Mello came to Washington on May 2nd to try and do just that. Eager to make the case for a sustained federal commitment to basic research, Dr. Mello from the University of Massachusetts Medical School joined fellow winners Roger Kornberg and Andrew Fire from Stanford University, John Mather from the University of Maryland in NASA, and George Smoot from the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab to advocate for science and innovation. These five Americans swept the Nobel Prize Science Awards in 2006, winning in chemistry, physics, physiology, or medicine, and marking the first time in over 20 years this country has seen such an achievement. This remarkable sweep made their presence on Capitol Hill that day an invaluable one. And clearly there's so many challenges that we face as a country, and, and maintaining our edge on research and uh, the type of uh, innovation that America has been famous for is a challenge for us. We, we really do look forward to your advice as to what are the priorities. I mean, you, we have very difficult budget problems here. We have very difficult challenges. And, uh, we want to do the right thing. The historic day of meetings and substantive conversations with members of Congress, the administration, and the press began with a breakfast discussion hosted by Senators Joe Lieberman and Thad Cochran that resulted in a candid dialogue about science education issues and the realities of our nation's shortcomings when it comes to keeping America competitive. The number of teachers teaching science who were not educated in science is stunning and embarrassing in, in public schools in this country. Everyone could hear what we've heard this morning. I think we would be inspired as a, as a part of our government to do a better job, work harder, make sure we achieve the results that ensure a bright future for our research scientists, communities, education communities generally, and our entire country at large. After heading to the Washington Post for coffee and a chat with a group of science and medical reporters, the Nobelists spent a few minutes bringing their message to Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid and Senator John Kerry in separate meetings. From there, it was off to a luncheon with the House Science Committee, hosted by Chairman Bart Gordon, where each Nobelist was presented with a copy of a House resolution authored by Congressman Jerry McNerney of California, recognizing their extraordinary achievements. Uh, we're facing enormous challenges nationally and we're facing challenges globally and we need all of our society engaged uh, especially in uh, bringing up our young children. I think we need uh, to, to commit to a more substantial um, uh, investment in our education, educating our, our young children so that they're ready to meet these challenges. The Nobelists came to Washington to push a message about how science and technology affects all Americans in our everyday lives. And because of these benefits, a sustained commitment to federal funding and focus on this issue is vital from Congress. According to the Nobelists, it is that commitment that will help train the next generation of innovators by fueling research on American university campuses and at our national laboratories. We come at one of the most exciting and important junctures in the history of all of our science. Uh, this is a time when uh, the investment made over the past uh, several decades uh, has begun to pay off very handsomely. Uh, one of the reasons why we've all come today is out of concern that that investment should be sustained and a similar investment made in the future so that another generation uh, following ours uh, will also reap those rewards. One of the things that's changed over the last few years with the speed of communication and the, the really the impact that science has on all of our lives is the, the importance I think that both pure and applied science has for everything going on in this country. And one of the things that I think we're all going to see in the next few years is the Im importance that us talking to you and you talking to us is going to have. Really those two uh, modes of communication are really going to be critical in terms of what's going to happen 10 years from now, five years from now. And based on the overwhelming response from members of Congress and their reception of these esteemed scientists, it's clear their presence was felt and their message was being heard. Thank you so much for making America look good. But when you look at the quantity of scientists, mathematicians, and engineers that we turn out, we are really challenged. I think this year China will turn out more English-speaking engineers than we do, and about half of ours are Chinese, aren't they? Uh, 
And this is a result of what our culture appreciates. You really get what you appreciate. This theme of America's threatened competitive edge because of countries like China and issues with education and immigration was a prevalent one and continued to dominate the conversation at an afternoon roundtable discussion hosted by the Commerce, Justice, Science and Related Agencies Appropriations Subcommittee Chair, Senator Barbara Mikulski, and Ranking Member, Senator Richard Shelby. They're going to have that base of scientists and engineers and, and uh, researchers in the future. Uh, and, and all of this is, is going to be ultimately get into to economic uh, competition, among other things. That's is right. it not, Doctor? You're absolutely right. And we better wake up to this. People like to go to hot places. You know, if something's on the move. It, people gravitate that sure. way. Well, th this would increase, this authorized increasing funding for the National Science Foundation doubling over five years and for the Office of Science doubling over ten years. That's for good. For the federal government, uh, that's, that's a long range and that's a great goal. And you said it, people will go where there's opportunity, particularly if they know the opportunity is reliable. So what does a young person know in China? Their, their country's going to make this investment for 50 years. Sir Hooney doesn't know what the hell's right. going to be invested in NIH from hour to hour, exactly. let alone what's over at the National Science that's Foundation. That's the problem. So we've got to get real here. And this sentiment that Senator Mikulski so passionately displayed was echoed by the Nobelist message that while they appreciate the new commitment from Congress to double federal science research programs at the National Science Foundation, for example, there are others, like the National Institutes of Health, that are facing flat funding or even cuts. This sort of policy is dangerous because new discoveries are fed by investments across disciplines of science. The chilling effect of such a funding environment ripples through the system uh, and it is devastating first of all uh, to as I have said the willingness of established investigators to take chances and then second of all of course to the interest of young people in pursuing careers in science. The Nobelists also brought their case to an afternoon Senate hearing with the Science Technology and Innovation Subcommittee chaired by Senator Mark Pryor and carried live on C-SPAN. Uh, we live in you know uh, uncertain times and we have uh, on the other hand, great opportunities. And those are, those are the two reasons why we need to continue to invest in science broadly in this country. And so it's very important with this, with the, whether we got our foot on the accelerator or our foot on the brake, because it affects the whole future of our future workforce. It is the combination of, of steadily rising you know, federal funding and the environment and the, uh, the appreciation of how important science is to the nation either solving crises or just making the economic prosperity go, that will bring young people to dedicate their lives to trying to make this a better world. Nobel Reading from a statement chemistry, released by Speaker medicine, of the House Nancy Pelosi to honor the Nobelists and their memorable visit to Capitol Hill, Senator Pryor thanked them Nobel for their important work and reaffirmed the urgency of their message. Their achievement will, I hope, inspire young people to study science and inspire policymakers to rededicate themselves to preserving America's role in the world's, as the world's preeminent scientific nation. After meeting with a dozen members of the House of Representatives, 13 members of the Senate, reporters and editors at the Washington Post, and wrapping up the day with a meeting at the White House with Chief of Staff Josh Bolton, it was clear the day's events were an enormous victory for both the Nobelists and basic science research. The testimony and experience of these five accomplished Americans is just further proof of our nation's undeniable responsibility and obligation to continue to invest in the future. Their presence in Washington undoubtedly struck a chord among policymakers that we hope will affect change for years to come. You have made a great contribution to the world and I hope an even greater contribution to the next generation of Americans who will aspire uh, to carry the banner too. I just want to underscore what Joe Lieberman said. Your presence here is really big for us and helpful for us. I just really want to thank you for doing it. You've advanced the issues, you're advancing the issues by being here, and it really does give us the uh, ability, I think, to, to try to carry out this agenda.